the first study that I was talked about was on the use of non-invasive vagus nerve stimulation. So the key thing about this is it's transdermal. So it's a device that you just put, you know, right near your neck, simulates the vagus nerve. One of the important concepts of this is it doesn't really change anything. It doesn't modify your heart. It doesn't change your heart rate or anything like that. And what we're looking at is how it actually impacts within the migraine uh, domain. And so what we're looking at specifically is we have two different models of episodic migraine. And we show that vagus nerve stimulation actually worked as well as sumatriptan as, you know, kind of the gold standard for anti-migraine therapy. It worked equally as well in both the uh, model induced by nitric oxide and a, a model that we have that's induced by by a pungent odor like so for a, you know a very strong smell is actually able to trigger some people's migraines and vagus nerve stimulation was able to work equally as effective what we went on to do in that study though is we wanted to understand how it works is, is it different than sumatriptan or is it pretty much the same and what we found is that it actually works through descending modulation pathway so what we did is we injected inhibitors into the spinal cord basically and what we found is that it the vagus nerve actually increases uh, GABA A so it's actually working through a GABAergic system to which is an inhibitory nervous uh, neurotransmitter to actually basically block ascending pain signaling and such and then the, the other thing that we looked at is that there's these neurons within the spinal cord the inhibitory neurons that also were activated and we found that when we put inhibitors of the serotonin receptors the 5-HT3 or 7 that we could basically block the inhibitory effect of the vagus nerve which actually then provides evidence that it's a completely novel mechanism that's different than a lot of the anti-migraine drugs that are on, currently on the market and I think the interesting thing is, is that's the same kind of a pathway though that's activated you know by like things like the opiate drugs but one of the things that we also found in our study was it does not actually cause any addictive behavior and it didn't cause any withdrawal symptoms in the animals.